What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video on EDT, Oded Treasure. I'm Steven, thanks for coming back. And in this video, I'm going to explore a vintage fragrance, and I'm going to compare a vintage to a more modern formula of one of the most well-known men's fragrances in history. You can tell me in the comments, guys, if you disagree, if this is not one of the top five or top 10 most well-known fragrances. Not saying it's the best fragrance, maybe not the most iconic fragrance. You can tell me in the comments what you think. It's one of the most blank men's perfumes in history, but I'm talking about none other than this one, Dracar Noir. You know it, you may love it, or you may be sick of it. I like this, and I have a backstory with Dracar Noir. Just to put it simply, this is the first fragrance that I ever noticed, that I can ever remember noticing in my life. And it happened as, uh, as I was in high school. As I was in high school, I used to go to, uh, I used to go to high school. My buddy had a car and we used to drive to high school together and he got his car, I think he was driving before me, and he loved cars. He got a 1971 Pontiac Firebird, Formula 400. I mean, it was a real American muscle car. It was awesome. It was really clean. The interior was black leather. And I just remember the smell of the car. It was just that that smell. It was a good smell, like a, like a clean, not a new car smell, but just that 70s kind of clunky leather interior car going to school in the morning like 7 a.m in the morning and he smelled like this stuff because he got this as a gift i guess from somebody you know we we're 17 years old and he must have just freshly sprayed this on and i'm driving to school like for three or four months this was going on before i was driving my car and i can't i can never forget that that's that feeling of going to school in the morning and and I'm like half awake. It's not a great feeling, but just the smell of this Dracar Noir inside of that Pontiac Firebird muscle car, the sound of that engine roaring and the tunes, the tape in the tape deck of, uh, what was it? Was it a CD? I guess we had a CD player. That's right. The CD radio in the car blasting the uh, Dazed and Confused soundtrack talking about the Days and Confused movie. If you haven't seen that, you got to check that out if you want to see a, a slice of um, American life, Americana, uh, American high school life in the mid-70s. Now, I'm talking about th that time for me was somewhere around 94, 94, 95, like 23 years later. But like our friends, we had our own kind of like a modern day version of uh, – Days and confused, you know, we all had cars and we were driving around in our cars and doing other crazy stuff. So I just remember Dracar Noir that my buddy had this and I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. It smells pretty good. So this is the first fragrance that came into my life and just got me noticing fragrances. Now this bottle, I got this bottle and I looked at the back. I looked at the batch number here, which is UW016. Went to Raiders of the Lost Scent. Raiders of the Lost Scent has a great, it's a great blog and it has a lot of information on Guy LaRoche fragrances. So of course, Dracar Noir is covered. And looking at all the clues on this, you have this green dot, or this is black and white, I guess. What is this? Uh, guys, do you know what this stands for? It's like the recycling symbol. So does that mean that this is like green or... This is, um, I don't know, made of recycled materials or sustainable or just what does it exactly mean? But I guess I'll just call it the, the circle, like the green circle or whatever. So a couple clues on this bottle. The address, 16 Place Vendome, this started in the early 90s. And it still says Cosmere, distributed by Cosmere. But I looked up the batch code, and this is actually from 2001. So this one isn't really that vintage. This is kind of a, I don't know what you'd call this, maybe in the middle. 
because this began in 1981, and this is a flanker of Drakkar. And I do have a bottle of Drakkar. I have a small mini of Drakkar. It's discontinued, very hard to find cheap. There are some bottles still online here. I'm considering buying one. There's one that's, it's a 15 ml bottle and it's like 25 bucks and I'm on the fence whether I should buy it or not just to have it as a collector's item. Uh, all right, so that's all there is about this one. Smells nice. What do I think of it? This smells very nice. I do like it. It is, it's kind of in that barber shop. Um, it's in that family of barbershop fragrances. I can't describe it. I'm not good at giving reviews, but you you got to know what this is. If you don't, <laughs> I can't help you. But I want to try a vintage one. And I've been keeping my eyes peeled for one from the 80s because I heard from 1981 to 1989 is where the ingredients are the most pure or the most what can I say, authentic to what this is, was meant to be originally. After 89 or after 90, 91 and so forth, it changed a little bit. The, the, the scent that I remember on my buddy was super strong. My only, um, my only knock on this bottle and the ones I've tried, I've had a few bottles here in Japan, there's a little white spot on it, is that it doesn't last long. It just seems like after two or three hours, it's not really projecting and it's barely there unfortunately, but it's really nice the first hour. All right, so that brings me to this, what just came in today. Just got this one. It just barely was able to squeeze into that mail slot in the door. So the, uh, the seller can save some money when they ship it with this rate, where they ship it in an envelope that can be put through a, um, a slot. And it's really cheap to ship here in Japan, guys. What did this cost? This probably cost a total of $2 to ship this thing here. So something like 30 cents for this bubble mailer and like a dollar fifty total to ship this thing converted from the yen. So if you have something small and it's less than uh, an inch in size or something like that or less than an inch and a half, you can send it really cheap. All right, check this baby out. This is a vintage bottle of Drakkar Noir. You ever seen a bottle shaped like this before, guys? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I've seen it online, but I've never actually held one in my hand. <laughs> I'm making it like it's a big deal. It kind of is. You know, I had my eyes open for this, and, and here it is. So let's look at this bottle, and I'll tell you some of the clues to look for if you're interested in a vintage Drakkar Noir. The first thing is Guy La Roche Paris in one line here. So that means it's pre-1990, something like that. Anytime after 89 or 90, it's Guy La Roche Paris in two lines. All right. And this uh, shaped bottle. I guess this was only around in the later 80s. It doesn't mean it's in 1981. We'll take a look at the batch code in a second. I think, I don't know if the 100 ml uh, came in this, but it, all the information is, is on Raiders. You should just check out Raiders. All right, you can clearly see the batch code here, UJFA. Now, the seller who sold this to me told me already, I asked what the batch code was, and I got this information before I bought this. This UJ, just the UJ uh, tells me that this is exactly 1989. So 1989, this is right on the line of whether or not this is has been reformulated or not. So I don't know 100% if this is the original. And I'm going to keep my eyes open and buy an, an, any bottle that is pre-UJ batch code. So for example, UI... UH, anything in the alphabet before J is going to be, uh, it goes by years. So UI would be uh, 1988, for example, and so forth. So it's a 50 ml bottle. Some other clues here, 9 Avenue Montignon. This was the address, 
I think it was like from 85 to 1990, something like that. Before that, there was another address. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head. And you have, if you're interested, you have to look on Raiders for that. Distributed by Cosmeras here. Okay. So the seller said that there's really not much left in here. The seller said that there's about 10 ml left in here. So I'll tell you what I paid for it. I paid 880 yen, which is about six bucks. So I've just paid six bucks to basically try this thing. I hope I can at least get like a few sprays out of it. Um, I'm shaking it now. Man, I don't feel anything in here. This just feels like an empty bottle. So I kind of took a risk for six bucks. I'm going to grab my flashlight and see if I can look inside and see if I can determine if there's anything in here. It's, I mean, it's not even, I thought I would hear like, I thought I'd get lucky and it would be a little bit more than 10 ml in here, but I hear nothing. Let me get the uh, flashlight. All right, let's see what's in here. So you can see through it. Look at that. So there is something in there. There's a little bit in there. Maybe it's 5 ml, maybe it's 10 ml. So that's it. I'm just going to get to sample it. And I'll keep my eyes open for a another bottle. But look, you can't even tell in this uh, 2001 bottle here. I got the flashlight here. You can't see through this thing at all. So in the older bottles, you can. All right, now it's time for a smell test. So let me spray it on. Two blasts of the modern 2001 on my left hand. And let's see what I can get out of this. Let's take a look at this cap here. Nothing on the bottom. There's nothing on any of these at Dracar Noir bottoms. It's always in the back like that. All right. Nothing, guys. Nothing. Let me turn it around. There we go. Okay. There's a little bit in here. Maybe 5 ml. All right, so let me uh, wait for the alcohol to dissipate on my hands, and I'll give you my impression if there are any differences that I notice. All right, guys, so it's been about 10 minutes. I've been sniffing each hand, and there is somewhat of a difference between them. So on the Raiders website, if you read it, there's a compound, and I can't pronounce it. It starts with a D. But this compound um, gave a kind of a fresh laundry detergent scent to perfumery, men's perfumery. And it was used in this, it was used in cool water, and it, it was just kind of a, a new thing at the time. And an, one of the notes that was in, so that was in Dracar Noir, and one of the notes that was in the earlier version of Dracar was a patchouli, a patchouli note to give it more of a dark, earthy scent to go along with that fresh laundry detergent type uh, profile. And in 89 or after 89, they, uh, they removed it so that it just, it was just really just a fresh, more fresh and clean, the ones after 89 and 90. So the ones from 81 to 88 or 89, have more of a darker patchouli in the base. And I'm picking that up from this, to be honest. Yeah, this one just has the Dracar Noir smell that we know. And it's just clean and it's kind of fresh. But this one does have somewhat of a darker base to it. If that's patchouli, then that's what it is. So they're both nice. Uh, I like both of them. I can't tell you what the dry down is like. You know, that'll be like another 15, 20 minutes later. It's drying down now. It's only been about 10 minutes. But it's relatively a, 
I don't know. Do you think this is a cheapy, guys? I think a new one is like 35 or 40 bucks. Have you tried the uh, Drakkar Noir, the new one? What's it called? Intense, I guess? I haven't tried it. I've just heard that it's... People are not... The fragrance community, the videos I've seen online, it just hasn't been very impressive. People just say that there's no... It, it doesn't perform well, and it's really nothing special. It's very underwhelming. So I haven't tried it yet. It hasn't come my way cheaply yet. But I'm a, just I'm a little disappointed that there's barely anything left in here. Maybe there's 5 ml in here. So I have some more sprays to use this and wear it and try it out. And uh, see how I like it compared to this one. A men's classic. This is one of the few flankers that was more popular than the original. If you can think of more like that where the flankers are better or even more popular than the original one, let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, if you like my content. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more talk about vintage, discontinued, rare, and interesting fragrances. I'm building up a collection of cool stuff I'm finding in Japan, and this is a unique opportunity this time in my life where I have a passion for this stuff, and um, I'm seeing these bottles flash right before my eyes. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you're having a great day, and I'll catch you in the next video.